Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. So I've got a little interesting project I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna be working on a machine shop today. Uh, a while back, uh, I acquired a uh, Model H Kerner Trekkie dividing head. And I've got a uh, dividing job coming up. Uh, it's gonna actually be another little gear repair job that I've gotta do. And uh, the problem I've got is uh, the, the dividing head only came with one index plate. And there were a total of seven plates that uh, K&T offered uh, for their dividing head. Three of them probably do the majority of the uh, indexing. And that was, there was really three plates that came with the set, but then there was an option to buy four additional plates for some special indexing needs. Uh, but I only have one of them. I have plate number two, which is, uh, what is it? It's got uh, 21 to 30 three uh, holes in it, or divisions in it. And uh, I think the one I'm needing is plate one. I can't remember what exactly which uh, one it is, but I don't have the plate I need. Been looking uh, for some of these on eBay for a while now. There's dividing head plates on there all the time, but never seem to be the ones that I need. So uh, we're just gonna make some. And uh, I can tell you, this is not the first time I've actually made a dividing head plate. Back years ago when I worked in the machine shop, uh, we had the same thing. We had a dividing head, didn't have the right plate, so we made uh, the plate, or I made the plate, uh, that we needed to do it, uh, needed for that job. And I just went ahead and made the whole plate while I was at it. And uh, you're basically gonna do something very similar here. So um, the plate that I've got is, let's see, this is five and three eighths inches in diameter. Uh, it has a hole in the middle here that's bored out. And uh, that is about, a, it's an inch and three quarter. Uh, the plate is a quarter inch thick. And um, what I want to do right now is I want to get the actual blank plates made up without any holes in them, but actually get the plates themselves made that have those dimensions, the outside diameter, the inside diameter, and the proper thickness. Uh, and to do that, I've got some of these um, plates here. And uh, these were some cutoffs from uh, a, a laser cutting job and uh, these were basically they were cutting some plates and cutting out these holes. These plates are eight and a half inches roughly in diameter, a little bit smaller than that actually, a good bit larger than the plate that we need. Uh, but it'll give us a piece of material to start with and these were free. The price was right, which is why I'm using them. Uh, the thickness on these is a little bit thickness. Again, I need a, half, a quarter inch thick uh, and these, what were these? These are measuring uh, 315 thousandths and I need 250 thousandths. So we got a little bit of material uh, to take off of them. So game plan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this uh, disc in the lathe, uh, chuck it up in a, in a regular chuck. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drill a hole. Uh, I've got a drill bit going up to inch and a half. I actually have an inch and three quarter drill bit, but I, I think what I want to do is go a little bit undersized and that's the next size smaller I have. And then we'll bore it out to the exact right size because that inside diameter is critical. Then I'll go ahead and, and put face off the one side. And then we're going to flip it around. I'm going to use a little trick I'm going to show you guys. You'll have to stay tuned to see what it is to mount this on uh, that side and then we'll go ahead and face the other side to thickness and uh, in the process of all this too we'll have to uh, reduce the diameter down turn the diameter down so it's going to be two operations on the lathe or two setups on the lathe several operations but uh, i've got to work on both sides of this disc and we'll get them down um, while i'm at it uh, i picked up six of these big discs again there were a total of seven plates that k and t made i'm going to go ahead and make six new blanks and uh and uh, later on, we'll get the holes put in these. And uh, while we're at it, we're just gonna make a complete set and then I'll have everything I need from now on. So that's the game plan. Let's get over to the lathe and we'll get started on it. So I've got my disc here mounted now in the lathe. I've uh, turned my jaws around in here, actually put in the, uh, the outside gripping uh, jaws uh, to grip this disc to get out of there where I need to. And uh, we're just gonna come in here right now, punch a hole, and uh, drill it out to inch and a half, like I said, and then we'll bore it out to inch and three quarters. Start with a center hole.
It's enough to get my hole started. My first hole is going to be half inch. Second hole will be seven eighths. My final hole is going to be inch and a half. So now we need to bore out about another 250 thousandths. Uh, got my boring bar set up here, and uh, we'll just go in here and get it done. And uh, probably just measure it with the calipers. It needs to be, it's a pretty precision fit, but it's not anything that's gotta be super, super critical. Uh, but I would like to get it within a thousandth, uh, but I think I can measure that with the calipers just fine. <laughs> That is right on the money. If anything, it's a half a thousand thunder. Uh, I'll tell you what, I may just run another spring pass through there and uh, call it good enough. The next step here is we want to go ahead and put a light facing on this side just to clean it up, get a good machine surface on it. I think I'm just going to use the boring bar to do that. It's already set up in there. Um, I should be able to just bring it right out to me. I'm going to stop a little bit shy of getting to the edge just because I don't want to get into my, my, uh, my jaw, jaws here on the chuck. Uh, and that's all going to be machined off anyway. So we'll get out here close to the edge and just stop it. Uh, let's. Crank it up a notch on the speed. That may be a notch too much.
All right, so we've got the uh, inside board to the proper diameter. We've got this one side faced. Again, went shy, just shy of being all the way, but again, that's going to be turned off. Very happy with the uh, surface finish on that. Man, that turned out really nice. So now I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this process on the other uh, five discs that I have since I'm set up for it. And uh, once I get those done, I'll do them off camera. We'll come back to you and uh, we'll show you the rest of the process. So we're moving right along on here. We've got all six of these plates now bored and uh, faced on one side. Uh, finish looks good on all of them. So next step here is we need to flip these over and uh, mount this on this flat side and turn the outside diameter and face off uh, the inside of this thing. So to do that, uh, we're going to actually uh, use a couple of tricks here, including a, uh, just a friction uh, mount as well as a glue mount uh, to get this done. And uh, we'll take you over to the lathe now and uh, we're going to get our a jig, our little faceplate jig made up specifically for this job. So first thing I need to do is um, I need to make a, a piece to use as kind of a bearing, a pressure plate, I guess you'd say, to press my part up against this uh, face place I'm going to be uh, cutting. And to make that out of, I've just got a piece of plastic basically here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to face off one side and uh, we're going to hollow out the center, which is where that hub will come up through in case it does come out a little bit proud. Uh, it's only going to, because it's going to be pressing up where that bore is, uh, inch and three quarter inside of this isn't going to matter anyway. It's not going to be touching anything. So I'm going to hollow that out. And uh, then we'll flip it around, we'll face it off, and we'll put a center hole in there. And that way we can come in and press this piece up against uh, the, the plate uh, on the little uh, fixture I'm going to make. And uh, the pressure will help hold it in place. That's a little over inch and three quarter. That's just what I want. But I think I do want to go a little bit deeper on this. So uh, I'll go back to the center and uh, pull back out. All right, that'll be fine for the inside. We'll flip it around. Put a little chamfer on this. Well, actually, a big chamfer. And finally, uh, we're going to put a pretty good size center in here uh, that will be what puts us the pressure on this. So the next thing I need to do is make the little uh, faceplate, jig, chuck, whatever you want to call it, that uh, we're going to be mounting these to. And to make that out of, I just got a chunk of aluminum here. Um, and I'm not even going to bother cutting it. It's just short enough as it is. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to basically face it off. I'm going to turn a little boss in the center of this to match uh, the inch and three quarter inch um, uh, holes that I've got drilled. The pieces will then come up over this and uh, we'll show you how we'll hold it in place in a minute. We'll start by facing it.
little bit of run out in it. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, really, all I'm worried about is a good face to mount this on. So uh, we're not going to take it out until we finish. So we're not even going to worry about the little bit of run out in it. It's just not important. Uh, we'll turn everything to be running true. for the fall. So one other thing uh, before we get done, because we're going to be using this as a glue chuck and actually using some glue to hold this in place, I want to mill a couple of, or cut a couple of little grooves in the face of this just to give that glue uh, some place to go when I press it all in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, so now comes the fun. Uh, so we've got our chuck made. I told you it's going to be a glue chuck. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using super glue. We're going to put that on the face of this. We'll put it on uh, and then basically mount uh, the part in here. And uh, super glue, if you've never used it, is an extremely strong uh, glue. Uh, it's an amazing glue actually. But one of the nice things about it is, is that it's easily to reverse. A little bit of heat so I can take a little propane torch put a little heat on there that'll break that bond and it should come right back off I've used this type of uh, glue chuck before but quite honestly never on a part this big and uh, while in theory it should work fine I have a little bit of concern because we are going to be removing a lot of metal and uh, uh, I guess my biggest concern is is that if I get in a hurry uh, and my part gets hot, I could actually create enough heat to break the bond uh, before I get through with it. So uh, we're going to be taking small cuts and uh, taking our time on this. Um, but this theory or this method uh, does work and it works extremely well, particularly when you want to mount a flat surface to another flat surface for machining and don't really have a good way of holding it. Uh, so as long as you take light cuts and don't build up too much heat, uh, it tends to work really well. So we're just going to take the super glue and uh, we're going to just uh, put a good bit of mound right there on the face of this uh, chuck. And I've cleaned this, the surfaces, both of these surfaces very well with mineral spirits and then with uh, some lacquer thinner. All right, we're gonna give that a little bit of time to bond. We've got everything uh, mounted up now. The, the disc is glued in place. I've got my uh, little spacer that I made here, my pressure plate. It's putting pressure up against this and I use that to help uh, hold it in place while the glue's been drying. And I think what I'm going to do is while I've got all this set up, I'm going to go ahead and turn the outside diameter down. Let that be my first step. And then once that is done, we'll take the disc out. The glue should hold it in place and we'll face off uh, the other side. So that's the game plan.
let's see how it works. Again, we're going to be taking light cuts. Uh, this is going to take a while, uh, but I think it's important that we don't get in too big of a hurry. Uh, you know, you can actually use this setup with just this friction plate uh, to, to do the, what we're doing, but because of the facing cut, we need the glue in there as well. So we've been working away at this uh, and getting down kind of close. Uh, still got a ways to go, a little ways to go. Um, after some trial and error, we determined that about 60 thousandths is about what I can make in a pass without causing any problems. I decided to put the cool mist on here uh, just to kind of keep things a little bit cool and uh, it seems to be working well. So uh, we're going to take a measurement after this cut and uh, see where we're at. Alright, we're 16 over our mark. be real close here. About four and a half. Looks like we're about a quarter of a thousandth over, we're going to call that good enough. And we'll clean up the back side of this piece. We're raising that burr and put a little chamfer on it. Now we're going to see how well this uh, glue is still holding. Uh, it seems to be on there. I'm going to take really light cuts here. Uh, we're not going to get in a hurry at all. And uh, I'll turn my cool mist on. Hopefully get a little cooling action going on here as well. I think I will speed it up a little bit though. I got 45,000 to take off and put my uh, dial indicator on here to measure. And I think we'll just do about 10,000.
Finish it up. We'll put a light chamfer on this uh, outside edge. Final step here is we need to uh, heat this up to break the bond of the uh, CA glue or the super glue. Ideally, I'd use a propane torch for this, but I don't seem to have one out here at the museum. I'm gonna bring one from home tomorrow uh, when I finish up these, but for now we'll just use the uh, uh, settling torch. So we'll let this uh, chuck cool down a little bit. I'm gonna come in here and we'll take a, and just put a real light face on that, clean it all back up again. And uh, we'll glue another piece on and go to the next part. Well, a lot of work to make a big washer, <laughs> but uh, we're making short work of it here. Um, that one is pretty much done. Uh, after I took it off, I just hand deburred the inside of that. Uh, there's still a little bit of glue residue on here. At home, I actually have some uh, um, uh, dissolver or a thinner, or whatever you want to call it, for uh, super glue. So I'm gonna bring that up here tomorrow and I can wipe that down. It should clean right up. Uh, I use a lot of CA glue in my wood turning and I've got some uh, stuff to, should make that a little bit easier to, to take apart. So I've uh, also got some activator. I think I'm gonna bring that up and uh, spray it on the back side of the the part, I'll glue up the chuck and then uh, spray the, the activator on the other side. Maybe it'll bond a little bit better and quicker. Um, but anyway, we got one down, five more to go. I'll do the other five off camera and uh, we'll bring you back at the end. So I finished machining all six of the blanks. Um, came out fine here. Um, I will say that as we went through these, I was able to kind of slowly just playing with the settings on the lathe and uh, you know not wanting to push it with that glue chuck uh, where uh, we would break the seal but at the same time trying to get my speeds and feeds up and my as fast as I could to get the job done and uh, I was able to get this, the lathe running a good bit faster and uh, without any problems and uh, you know after the first couple it was taking me about 45 minutes uh, really start to finish uh, to finish these things out. So to turn down the disc and then uh, face off the side and then uh, take it off the chuck and you know put the new one on the chuck. So uh, sped it up quite a bit. And uh, the last uh, last four I think I did in about two and a half hours and uh, it knocked everything out pretty easily. You know, uh, this is one of those jobs that uh, if I had to do it again, I probably would have just, uh, instead of trying to to use a piece of uh, blank material that, uh, you know, basically got for free, I might have just gone ahead and paid a little bit extra money and had somebody burn these out uh, where I didn't have to drill the hole and I just had to bore the hole out and then uh, the, where the outside diameter didn't have so much material to cut off. It was a quite tedious job on the lathe. You know, it wasn't hard work, it just took a while and we could have sped that up considerably and for no more than it probably would have cost to get these burn out, that probably would have been a, a uh, the, really the way to go about it. But, you know, I, the way I did it worked, and uh, hey, I use free material, even better. So, now the disc, uh, this is a dividing head, this is the Kearney Tractor dividing head that uh, these will all go on, and basically uh, this disc will fit right up on that little boss in there. If it's in this sleeve, of course, there will be three screws. Uh, the original here has three screws that this will screw in place and then uh, you tighten it up. There's a little clamp or a ring around it that tightens everything in place. And uh, you know, I checked them all out. They fit great. So the next step here is obviously to put all the holes uh, in these. We got six blanks and uh, they each will have different hole patterns put in them. 
Um, and how do we go about doing that? So I told you at the beginning that I had made an index plate one time before, and the way that I put the holes in that is I use a rotary table, and I calculated uh, the angle for between each hole, depending on the number of divisions. So, you know, you would take uh, the number of divisions that you want, divide it by 360, which is how many degrees is in a circle, and that would tell you the angle uh, to dial in between each one of those uh, holes. And uh, basically, I just did that for each of the hole patterns. I had a, 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 a list there that I worked off of. Uh, this was back before we had spreadsheets and computers, so I, I did it all by hand, basically, and wrote it all out. And I would dial that in on the rotary table and drill the hole. And dial the next one, drill the hole. Dial the next one, drill the hole all the way around and I did the whole hole patterns and uh, it was a very tedious job as you can imagine. Uh, in fact, it was quite nerve wracking. Uh, you only got one shot. If you missed uh, your your angle, uh, you were pretty much, um, you are screwed. Uh, you had to start over. So I actually, when I did it, I, I had somebody in the shop with me and I would, I would dial it in on the rotary table. I would look at my number and I then would let another person verify that I had the number right and then uh, I would look at it again and then drill the hole. So, and I could very easily do it the same way. Uh, it, it's quite time consuming as you can imagine too, but well, the rotary table method is definitely a way to do this and uh, if I was in a hurry and need to get one done, I could very easily do this on my rotary table and knock it out. It's just time consuming and takes a lot of time. But I think what we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, do this a little bit easier. And, and I've got a buddy of mine that operates a uh, CNC milling machine uh, where he works. And I've talked with him. And what he's going to do is he's just going to program the uh, different hole patterns into the milling machine. We'll, he'll mount these on something, you know, locate the center of, uh, of this, and then basically just let the milling machine go pick all those holes in there. Uh, and, you know, that will take the human factor the human error factor out of things and hopefully uh, it'll give us a very accurate plate and be able to do it much quicker and probably more accurately uh, than uh, dialing it in by hand. So that's the plan, particularly with six different plates with six different hole patterns. You know, it would take a really long time uh, to do this by hand. Doable, yes. And uh, you know, like I said, if this was a rush job and I didn't have time to wait on them, that would probably be what I did. But uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take the easy way out and uh, let him uh, drill all these holes. So I'm gonna put these in the mail to him and send them off, and uh, hopefully here uh, before too terribly long, we'll get them back and we'll have a complete set of all seven uh, index plates uh, for my Kearney Trekker dividing head. And uh, with that. Hopefully, I won't have anything ever come in that I won't be able to divide on uh, if, I, if I need to. Well, that'll about be a wrap. Uh, hopefully, uh, you got to see some new things here. Uh, see a glue chuck. How many people have ever seen a glue chuck before? That's actually a trick that uh, I've used uh, before. Uh, it's been a while. And uh, uh, I have to be honest that uh, I was refreshed of that memory of using a glue chuck recently when I was watching uh, uh, a YouTube channel, ClickSpring, a uh, clock maker, and he uses glue chucks all the time uh, for doing mostly on brass. And, uh, and uh, when I saw him using it in his videos, I had remembered that little trick from the past and said, you know what, this would be a perfect opportunity to use a glue chuck. Uh, the super glue work trick works great. Again, just make sure that you uh, take your time and don't get too carried away. It is only so strong. Uh, it is very strong. It's a lot stronger than people probably think it is, uh, but it does have limitations. And uh, one of those limitations is when you get it, uh, when you use the heat to break it off and, and get it off, you have a lot of glue residue on here. And I basically was able to clean that up going over to the wire wheel, uh, just knocking most of it off. And then uh, using some acetone as a solvent um, to basically wipe off a little bit that was left. Um, it would, took, took a little elbow grease, quite honestly, but, but it does come off a pretty, it comes off a, uh, with the acetone. So anyway, there you go, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll let you guys take a look at the dividing plates uh, when we get them back. Uh, hopefully my buddy will be able to get that knocked out for me and uh, we'll be able to be in business and uh, we'll have another uh, episode of using the dividing head coming up in the near future uh, once we get the right plate uh, to get that job done. So thanks for watching.